All right, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to the season finale of the fourth season of PhD the philosophical drama. I'm your host Shweta and today I'm super duper excited to host this episode. Not just because it's the season finale, but also because it's our 50th episode. Also because I'm going to co-host this one with my dearest co-host Amog. And the most special reason being that we are going to talk to our third co-host who has recently graduated from Isar Pune, Dr. Sukanya Chakraborty. So I'm going to quickly add Amog and let's listen to his thoughts about this. Hi, Shweta. Hi, Shweta. Interesting. Yes. yes. Um, can you uh, hear me? I think I am. Wait. Okay. Uh, yes. Your volume is a little low. Can you say, can you speak again? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes now it's perfect. Okay. Perfect. How are perfect. you today? I am doing good. And and as you are excited, I am also very, very, very excited. Uh, and for all the amazing reasons that you already mentioned, it's our season finale. It's our 50th live, which is, I think it's a great milestone for us. And also because we are going to host a dual host session for the first time, very first time. Yeah. Right? And, and we have a special guest. So I think let's, let's have our guests on board. Yeah. Yes, so let's add Sukanya and start bombarding her with questions. Yeah, exactly. Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh. Hello. Am I audible to you guys? Yes. Perfectly audible. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I just like feel. Uh, I I mean I was very excited, but this feels very very different than every other time I have gone live, trying to you know interview other people. Uh, the last five minutes have been very res retrospective for me because I was just trying to gather up all my thoughts. So yeah, it feels very different, but I am also like supremely excited to finally have the video call that we have as a team, but on live. So yeah, very excited. So it's also interesting for the Am I audible in a feedback. Is it better now? Uh, um, not, not, not okay. okay. My voice is. Let's see if. Maybe let's see how we can fix it. Is it better now? Oh, yes, much better. Yeah. Yeah, very, yeah I very think. Better. Yeah, okay. So the most interesting part I was uh, talking to Shweta the other day was you have interviewed on this very same show, both of us. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. This is a grandeur occasion where both of us uh, ask you questions about your journey, your PhD journey. And, and uh, as Shweta said, we, we want to bombard you, but we also <laughs> are really keenly uh, looking forward to the details of your journey and what inspired you to become Dr. Sukanya Chakravarti. Firstly, how does it feel now that you have a doctor tag in front of your name? How does that feel to you? I think it has not completely sunk in yet. I mean, I'm still trying to, you know, um, I think I need to go home to, you know, completely feel it because right now I am in a place where I'm surrounded by doctors. So yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think once I go home and I speak to my family and talk to my friends, uh, from school, I think it will be, I mean, I'll realize 
it more but i think one word for it is yeah relieved and uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah it, it's it's been a long journey it seems longer because i have done a integrated phd so i mean i couldn't really uh, distinguish the boundary between my masters and my phd so it seems like one long journey but yeah i think i feel very relieved and also very blessed that i finally could complete uh, this journey nice. so yeah i think yeah really yeah, so, so you meant would be the you need to go home you mentioned that part so i'm actually going to take you home in 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 a discussion in a conversation because i want yeah, to take, yeah. take you back specifically to your high school time to your undergrad time and i i have a strong reason to ask you about that that particular phase of your life because you come from bengal which is known to produce uh, filmmakers musicians but equally academicians there are right thousands of people in india um, coming from bengal who are very very successful academicians so what right, right. what is in so what is there in your system that you know you 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 become that good at at science so actually very interestingly uh, i mean i was never meant to be in academia like i come from a family of musicians and people who have had like who are uh, very talented musicians like my grandfather he was a very talented musician my uncle even from my maternal side like i have very talented musicians in the family so i have grown up with a lot of good music and i was never formally trained but uh, uh, you know i was just trained at home and uh, i think uh, one thing that really bugged me when i was a kid is that because i was in the middle of so many you know artists and musicians um, i always felt that there was a bit of comparison somewhere mm-hmm. so yeah. uh, i think when i reached my adolescence i had this drive of doing something different from what my family has done and you know undertake a journey which is very different from what people have already done so that i can become unique i think that was the main driving force for me to start studying hard so i think uh, when i was in my 7th standard i i stood first for the first time in my life and the feeling that followed was something that was very uh, different and i mean nobody could really uh, digest the fact that sukarni the musician the singer has suddenly stood first in wow. the whole uh, you know class so and that feeling i really cherished it and uh, i think since then i really started studying hard and i was always fascinated with biology and uh, uh, i always wanted to be a doctor i mean i was not really aware of the basic science uh, too much but when i was in my high school i was really studying hard for um, uh, for becoming a doctor but uh, when i was in my 11th there was this camp that happened there was this summer camp that that had happened where some of us were taken to this place called jbnsts which is a uh, science institute and we had a short uh, session uh, explaining what basic science is and uh, i was really fascinated before that i had no idea because i was always you know i always knew that science means probably engineering or medical or i was not really aware of basic science but that camp really gave me a lot of new ideas we had to do many small projects and i really saw that i have a flair in it so but i kept that as a plan b i really struggled hard to you know crack the medical entrances but unfortunately like there was a lot going on at my home at that time and i would like to speak about it uh, eventually but uh, yeah so i think i couldn't perform as well in the entrance tests and uh, thankfully i had performed better in my board exams so i went on to study microbiology in st xavier's college and uh, as in how, i mean i always thought that okay next year i will prepare and again you know sit for the medical entrance but i think 2 3 months down the the bsc program that i joined i was sure that okay this is what i want to do and uh, because i felt a lot more freedom and a lot more uh, you know room for improvisations and you know uh, which i didn't find in the medical 
courses and uh, even from my friends who had joined medicine um, i i saw that it was the course and everything felt very restrictive to me whereas something like basic science felt something that i could explore and you know it has way more independence and freedom so i think i really enjoyed that and i think 2 3 months down my first year i was kind of had said that okay i want to do science and i want to stay in academia so that's how i got the motivation for yeah that's very interesting as you said that uh, you know because you wanted to stand out from what your family was doing uh, you started yeah. studying which is a which is very <laughs> different there are you know there are families where people are scholars and they are academicians and then and there is a kid who wants to be a pop singer or who wants to be an actor <laughs> yeah reverse reverse direction that i've heard uh, this is like oh. kind of the first one really heard about in a reverse direction but that's interesting so tell me about uh, any any background that you or your family had or your friends which actually uh, you know i i know you told about the camp but something that triggered uh a career you know doing doing uh, education is fine like doing a, a bachelor's mm. in science and in science but phd is a big jump right it's not uh, it's yeah. not something you do i know there are there are way people who follow it as a traditional route but yeah. Yeah. was yeah. there a specific trigger that you want to do do phd see i will be very honest here so when i was actually towards the end of my bachelor's uh, when i was looking for my options for masters so i actually had a huge uh, pressure of uh, you know uh, so i uh, i like through my bsc because i had lost my father at a very young age i had a lot of burden uh, financially so i used to actively teach during my bachelor's uh it was a way of you know earning some extra money to manage uh, home and uh, like my studies etc and when i was actually teaching people i was teaching uh, high school students when i was in college and uh, that you know uh, gave me a lot of uh, push because aside my course work and everything that i was doing uh, i was constantly in touch with high school science and uh, i realized through that process that i really like teaching and talking to people and explaining stuff and it it works when i do it it's not like you know some people try but it doesn't work but for me i mean i really made some students get really good scores which really made me think that okay i have a flair in this so that is one thing which you know like kind of pushed me to get into something that that's more uh, in depth of what i know and then in further i can you know communicate with whatever i've learned but what happened is uh, so i i wanted to again the second reason for uh, for making me stay in academia but when i was actually looking for options after my bachelor's i was uh, i was extremely pressurized to take up a job because of the condition of my family and i was constantly pushed by like people and even i had this own feeling that okay i should you know uh, not just think about my own self interests but i have to think about everyone and i should take up a job but somehow i couldn't settle with that thought and then i started looking for options which would you know where i can do my studies but also get some amount of fellowship or uh, some kind of stipend so that i can also support my family to some extent and thankfully because my family is in kolkata and the cost of living in kolkata is really low so i could manage with even a meager stipend so yeah. i didn't have so much clarity back then that okay i want to do a phd or uh, you know i wasn't very honestly not aware of what a phd is but the only thing that drew me because uh, for the program the int phd program in iser pune was uh, that it's it's something that's paying a stipend and also i'm getting to do research so it was like win win situation for me so i had actually gone to tigaifal for my first interview 
and i was like i gave a very bad interview and i went very you know my confidence just like went like broke and i was like okay i don't know if i am taking the right decision and because i was you know at that time financially very bound i didn't even have enough money to come to pune to give the interview but i was very fortunate to have some family members and some of my friends who were there and they really supported me and i could finally you know push myself to come to pune and when i gave the interview after the interview i was even before seeing the results i knew that i was selected in the program because the vibe i had with the people you know you know that you have given a good interview and something in me was just telling me that um uh, that it it, it, it has happened happen. yeah and the most memorable incident was i was coming back from pune uh on a train and i think i was somewhere in nagpur and uh, i was i just opened my phone and i was traveling alone and i was like very scared and you know because i didn't travel alone before that and this uh, mail came saying that you have been selected and you know after all the struggles and everything that i have i went through and getting into the program it felt like a dream to me i mean that was probably the best moment of my life till now <laughs> i i was in tears when i saw that message and i knew that okay from now on uh, my career is going to you know go up so it's yeah. not it's not stuck anymore and for me uh, yeah living home was very difficult but you know the main drive was something that makes me do research and also helps me support my family and thanks to the uh, this in phd program they start paying you stipend right from your masters so uh, that was the main reason but i didn't have any surety or clarity about what research is what working in a lab is i had no idea i didn't even do any internships during my bachelor's because i was too caught up with my teaching and my course work so yeah i think i just went with the flow and i just landed in a phd i didn't have a clear cut plan so yeah that was the main reason why i joined the program and then eventually started my phd so, yeah so how did yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so how how did like in continuation with that like how yeah. how did you decide that you want to join this particular lab i know that in phd's have a lot of rotations and i think they rotate for 3 yeah. months in one lab and uh, right. but then i think they rotate in five labs and then they have to decide three labs so yeah yeah oh, okay yeah i forgot uh, so you have to do like one rotation per semester and by the summer of next year you have to make a choice and you continue with that lab so the thing is that i was interested in a particular lab and when i actually came to iser i had this huge was in inferiority complex seeing so many you know scientists and most of my batchmates they had some prior experience of research like they had either done done some sort of internship during their bachelors or some of them had dropped out of from some other institute and joined so i was probably one of the most immature person in terms of you know knowledge about lab and research and i had this huge inferiority complex and i would just cry every night thinking that i should just go back home but then when i actually uh, joined i had a particular lab in mind i wanted to work on cancer cancer research and i had written up my sop on ras and then i went uh, and started my first rotation realized it was a blunder uh, because i i had no idea of what things are i mean i just just mechanically did stuff i i wasn't even aware of the literature i didn't even know how to read papers so i think my first two rotations just went in understanding how research works how to read papers how do you assimilate knowledge from papers and then uh, translate it to your work how do you plan your work and stuff like that so i think by my first rotation was completely useless because i didn't know anything by my second rotation i had some clarity and thankfully when i joined my third rotation i was you know some somewhat prepared and that went very well because i was prepared 
and also i had uh, with my supervisor that she i had like the conversations i had with her i really loved the whole uh, you know the whole idea set of ideas that she gave me and the most interesting thing i mean i was very touched when i actually joined the lab initially i didn't have a mentor different people and then uh, one day one night i think it was pretty late i was stuck with something and i didn't know what to do and i called up gayatri and she literally came from her home she doesn't stay on campus she came and she helped me out and we finished it and the next morning also she came early uh, and she literally taught me how to do a protein purification herself and that moment i knew that okay i want to work with this person because if she is so invested in teaching me uh, despite being a professor i was like okay this is what i want to do and and, and I, i think that is the reason that that moment was the reason when i it was not the project or anything else but interestingly i finally ended up working on ras but on a very different aspect like ras is normally studied in eukaryotic biology but i started working on a ras in a bacteria because my lab worked on bacteria bacterial cytoskeleton and structural biology so the field was very different from what i initially had planned to do but yeah i think the whole interaction i had with my supervisor was the main reason why i just started off so how was how was the rest of your phd journey how like as an in phd like you said you know a lot of times you don't know what you're signing up for uh because right. you, you don't have that much of a research background if like if you have a masters then you do a, you do you know have had a project background or something like you have worked on things but as an in phd that's not there so did the graph change like after first two years and uh, how 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 did the transition happen yeah so from, so actually, from a basic science student to a researcher that's what i mean right so when i joined uh, i was still in my bachelor's days because the reason me so when i was in my bachelor's in st xavier's college uh, i i was getting regular concession from the college for my tuition fees because of my financial background uh, and for that i had to have a certain amount of gpa i had to continuously show that gpa for me to continuously get the concession and i was very caught up with the marks and the you know how much you are scoring but when i came to icer i was still stuck up with that idea of you know getting good marks in exams and everyone around me they were more focused into doing research and understanding the science and not obsessed with that so yeah. eventually when i started off and versus the end of my first year i realized that okay the marks is not important here what is important is how much you are learning and, and uh, so in my second year i was hell bent on taking up microbiology as one of the courses because i had studied and i was like okay if i take it i will get good marks but my friend he told me that, that you shouldn't take microbiology because you have already studied it take something that you have not studied before and then and that was the point i realized that okay it's it's this is not the correct way of doing science doing science is as much of knowledge you can get you can process and assimilate and get it inside your head and then use that for doing your work and i think for me when i learned this that how to understand and absorb what you are studying and not obsess over your marks and gpa is the time when i actually transitioned from a student to a researcher i think that was the main point and uh, yeah i think after that i started looking at things very differently and uh, it was a it was a learning experience it didn't happen in one day but i think the rest the remaining of my phd so uh, i had started off well initially and thankfully when i started off things started working very good like it i was not as stuck with work but then the pandemic came and i was right in the you know peak it was right after my comprehensive exam and i was you know just buckling up to, to 
you know start you know i've standardized everything and now i need to do the final experiments to you know finish something and then the pandemic came and i had to literally stop everything and go back home and uh, i had a huge mental health crisis at that moment because i was having this constant anxiety of with respect to like because i have always have this uh, stress about money and you know keeping my family well and everything and also finishing my work and my phd and since i was completely in an experimental lab i cannot do anything back home mm. and that was the time there was like no idea of when we are coming back and that time i had like i realized that i was going through a crisis i i spoke to i took help for that and uh, i think by the time i came back to campus things were much better for me mentally but i was prepared to see that things have changed like what since what i had left so after yeah. i came back was the real struggle that started because nothing started working the way it was working 6 7 months back and i was pretty broken down at that point but i think i had already started taking help before i faced all of this mm-hmm. i was kind of prepared but yeah i think even my lab mates and my supervisors helped me a lot but it was mostly a self journey so you know uh, and that was the time i really learned how to take failures in stride in terms of your work because i didn't really face a huge crisis with respect to my academics ever before before mm-hmm. the pandemic it had or like i had worked hard i had gotten results and i'd moved on but i had never faced like i'm working hard but nothing is working and how do you deal with that i think right. that is the second step where i transition from a student to a researcher yeah and uh, i think again getting it took me around 6 7 months to uh, again come back to a place where uh, i started i mean i had left before the pandemic and then i think after that uh, things started working better and then eventually i think it worked fine till the end but yeah that was i think that that these were the two major times where i really understood the real meaning of doing phd and research so yeah that was mostly right so what would you say at at such times when when you're working hard and things are not working out what would your advice to someone who's in that phase b so what i did was i uh, i always i mean i didn't take it as a profession but i always had music with me and uh, i had literally stopped doing music through my high school and bachelor's because i was extremely overworked and i was transitioning from teenage to early 20s and i had i was messed up with my <laughs> thoughts i didn't know how to organize time but i think when when the time i really faced this crisis where i'm working towards something and it's not working and the frustration that comes with it i think i i had nothing else to fall back on but music and uh, uh, and this show is another thing that i fell back on because uh, i remember that in pandemic i used to speak to amog regularly and he had also just moved to switzerland for his postdoc and i think both of us were having our own sets of crisis and we speak used to speak to each other and he gave this idea and i was desperately looking for you know means to you know like channelize my positive energy and overcome my frustration and uh, yeah so, so this we we started this show and i actually started investing a lot of my thoughts and energy into this and uh, amog was again instrumental in start, helping me start my youtube channel for my mu- music and he was like listen let's do a song together and then we you know recorded this song and then we put it out and that was the first video that i posted and i got amazing response from from people and they were like why don't you do this regularly and i think uh, like i i was lucky enough to be involved in a lot of cultural activities even before the pandemic 
but i didn't realize how yeah yeah right right because i want to rewind exactly where you are you are taking it yeah because yeah pandemic it was very very difficult and uh, i think it was instrumental for both of us to start this show but let's rewind back when you had joined as a phd student and exactly what shweta was asking what were the other things that you were doing and you said music so music was definitely very very big part of your uh, journey but i i know that theater was also a very important yeah uh, part of most icer people who love theater i think in general i would say yes yes what was for you before icer because i think you have done somewhat theater before icer as well and right. then you why yes. the theater icer so so take us through that aspect that why would you do something else when you are doing such hardcore research firstly why why is right. it important for a researcher to do it how much time and how much energy should one really invest in such such thing yeah so actually uh, i had done a lot of uh, music and a little bit of theater when i was in my high school uh, i used i was a part of the theater group from my school and i had also been part of some amount of theater even in college but i couldn't invest a lot of time but uh, i had this experience where i was performing on stage uh, this was in the third year of my bachelor's and mm-hmm. i had never felt too too scared on stage or of or of performing but um i had just lost my father and i was not doing very well and that was the first time i froze on stage and i had nothing to do but to just walk down the stage and again that was one reason i lost all my confidence and uh, i could not bring myself to get on stage back again but when i came to icer thankfully i was surrounded by some people who realized my talent and kind of pushed me to get back on stage and you were one of them uh, i had one of my batchmates shridhar and uh, i was very scared and hesitant in the beginning but uh, you know and it it took a lot of time because i was already doing coursework and lab and then i would have rehearsals every night from like 10 o'clock till 12 1 am at night it was you know difficult Uh, to uh, because next morning again i have a 9 o'clock class so it was difficult because i was not getting enough sleep but the amount of adrenaline the amount of endorphins that it triggered i think it reflected in my work and uh, i went back to the sukanya who who used to do music and theater and her studies in school and when i came to icer i couldn't do much during my bachelor's but uh, one or two successful shows again you know helped me bring back my confidence and it really helped my work also because uh, you know i i always had something to look forward to at the end of the day um, i would work and i would finish my uh, you know whatever i had to do in lab finish my homeworks or whatever studies that i had to do for my coursework and then i was ready and prepared and that was the first time i actually learned how to organize my time and, and uh, i think it was a really big push for me to you know plan my day plan things accordingly and then you know have a good thing at the end of the day and then go back to bed happy so even if it things didn't work in lab or i had some setbacks in my coursework or whatever i think initially having this uh, and also i got to know so many people i was always like as i said when i first came i had this huge inferiority complex and i didn't get out of my room for like full 6 months for the first semester i would just like you know be not be myself because i was so scared but i think uh, doing this theater and music when i joined in icer especially theater because it involves a lot of person to person interaction yeah. Yeah. and i i really it really helped me to you know overcome my fears and my insecurities even in terms of research uh, not right. only in terms of music or art or anything like even in terms of research it taught me how to uh, you know feel good about yourself and confident 
and we were like okay you are capable of doing this so i think that was the biggest thing that uh, that it taught me and yeah that I think and you're then the important points and, and and i'm really glad that you are really highlighting them because often most of us have this guilt feeling that i shouldn't be doing anything other than my research i am like bound married or you know connected to my research so much that if i do anything else it's kind of a wrong thing to do and i'm really happy okay. sharing how it positively affected your uh, research even when you had to spend more time uh, in a day doing certain things uh, than yeah. you normally do. Uh, so it's interesting yeah. and, to and it was not only me i mean looking at me i was thankfully i could even convince some of my friends who were obsessed with work to you know come and explore their artistic flares as well i think uh, many of us have this problem of this guilt that bugs us that okay we are not doing research and we are doing something else and it's not okay but it is okay because it you are doing your research at its own time you are doing uh, your other things at their own specific time and i really could you know just as i was pushed into all of this by some of my friends i also pushed other people who are actively doing because phd people are known to be very sadhu and like they are like they are not interested in cultural stuff and i would often be mocked at as you are a bsms because you are just you know just doing theater <laughs> and music and all that but then i i think i was uh, i normalized that no it's fine it's fine to you know if you like if you like playing uh, something some kind of sports or if you in if you like uh, music or theater or dance or any kind of you know thing other than research it's anything, okay anything to pursue anything. it and and it's something that's actually going to help your research eventually yeah, yeah. Right. i i personally feel like all of these things fall under creativity not just theater and music but also your research i mean if you're yeah. creative you will design creative experiments and that creative space has to be developed and sometimes you have these mind blocks when you're constantly doing similar kind of experiments or you know thinking only from one angle or one perspective but when you're doing something else like indulging yourself in theater music any kind of performing arts or anything else right. i think ideas do come from mm -hmm. somewhere else so even even yeah. like yeah. sports or anything like that i right. i think a change of perspective helps uh, i don't know how that happens probably there is science behind it uh, but <laughs> uh, i i consider all of this creative i i I mean, for me, science is also a creative mm. thing. Um, true, true, true. Yeah. So, again, going back to your music uh, passion for your music. So, you were saying that that is something which helped you during your PhD. How how has like starting a YouTube channel or uh, an Instagram page influenced your uh, work life balance? yeah so uh, see i uh, before i started the youtube channel or before the pandemic whatsoever uh, i i had i used to perform and uh, you know the whole as i said the whole adrenaline of performing on stage and the endorphins that come post your performing is something that really boosts you and i i started missing it through the pandemic and uh there was no way of getting any validation of your talent or whatever you are doing because my work was stuck i was not being able to you know get any outcome of my research so i think i needed some kind of validation from some end you know to give me some, some positive feeling something to you know uh, uh smile at the end of the day and i didn't realize that it would happen when i opened my youtube channel because as always i have this huge inferiority complex that no one is going to listen to it what is the point like I, I, but when i first, much i had to push you to really <laughs> post that video on right, your youtube channel right. 
because i had no idea yeah, yeah i had no experience of you know editing or doing anything of that sort i mean i would just perform on stage but putting up a video is something completely different i think all of you have realized by now so uh, yeah so when i uh, uh, when i started doing it and definitely it requires a lot of time because then you are putting up a music or anything you need to take multiple takes and you need to perfect it and you have to learn some sort of editing or some 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 sort of you know making a video look like a video and i think i was completely self taught at that time and uh, i explored something completely different i was just uh, you know I, i and it was very different from the work that i was doing in lab and research and it was not even active music it was just like putting up a video making a video of your song or whatever i think because it taught me something new like it was it was kind of a break from what i was you know constantly doing and then uh, somehow it reflected in how i started presenting my work after i opened my youtube channel because i really place that uh, whatever i was doing before that was something it's it's normal it's it's fine but you can you know present it differently you can not edit it but you can that there is a, there there could be different ways of reaching out to people with your own signs and i think that is something that's the biggest thing that my youtube channel or my music putting the music online or even to some extent this show making the videos out of the uh, initial episodes we had i even tried to like we tried to make a song uh, a theme song for the show and i think all of it actually uh, work life balance definitely i'll come to it but one 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 important thing is that it showed me how to present work in a in a fluid manner and then secondly because of the validation i was getting it it pushed me to you know make time for it because i was not being able to do till like i think 2022 there was no way of performing because there were restrictions and the only yeah. way i could perform was through my mm-hmm. channel or through a mobile screen so yeah i i had a help from my friends i used to shoot all my videos in the dark and then suddenly one day i had a package from one of my school friends of a you know of a ring light but please start shooting your videos in some light Absolutely. and then slowly slowly i started <laughs> learning and yeah i started making time for it so i would make i would try to post one video in the weekends or work on it in the weekends when i had some free time and again like i would look forward to it so again i would plan my work accordingly so that there is some time for doing this for recording the song i have to record at night because i do not have a sound proof setup so i would record it somewhere later at night so making time for all of that i think it really helped organize my uh, work and also the validation that came along really kept on pushing me to keep on doing it amazing that's great yeah. you talked about how uh, you took help during the pandemic right and See, this is similar time when you started your youtube channel uh and then you and me together we thought about starting this particular show and the time and again in our informal conversations the 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 aspect of this show helping you in your phd journey has come up because yeah you you time and again said that when you hear someone's story and when you find out what people have done it kind of you directly related to your story firstly and then right. you, you get a push uh, suddenly that okay i can really uh, uh, any obstacle that you might have you can really uh, overcome it so tell me that, right. that tell me that aspect because for, for at least for me and shweta as as runners of this uh, show we've started doing this after we finished our phd but right. you you are right. someone who, who did the show whilst doing your phd right. so what was that contributing to your journey yeah so i think the first thing that you said is very important because 
when i started doing the show i i it was very initial years of my phd and i had still not faced as i said i had still not faced that obstacle yet uh mm-hmm. so initially i would uh, uh you know first try to talk to people from their journeys try to uh, you know identify if there's something which i can learn and uh, adapt to and it 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 was always something positive that came out of what i spoke to people with and i got to learn about very different experiences so to some extent i the, the uh, you know the self sympathy that i had it kind of normalized and mm-hmm. it told taught me that it's okay it's very normal people have faced a lot worse and uh, whatever you are going through is something that's very normal everyone faces it so uh, that is something that uh, helped me and then i think i didn't even know the true meaning of a phd till i started talking to all these people because i have always spoken to phd's around me or seniors to me about what they are doing and never really introspected on uh, how their journeys are or like not the not the work that they are doing or the kind of experiments they are doing but something completely different and and i think it it, it just opened up a whole new definition of phd which i never really realized and i think i was very fortunate to have this experience uh at a time when i was you know just reaching the middle of my phd and i think it was very very useful because uh, by the time i reached towards the end of my phd i was emotionally matured enough i knew a lot about the struggles that people go through so i knew mechanisms as well because i had already spoken to people and they had taught me how to deal with those problems so every time i face it just became 100 times easier for me to tackle those problems because i just had one video to go back to and look at it but i had myself spoken to people and they have given a solution of how to deal with it so i think that was the biggest part and i was really blessed to have that uh, the whole, whole learning experience that i had and uh, you know now that i am applying for post docs and in different places uh, i think everyone is looking for uh, some sort of contribution in terms of uh, you know mental health and things like equality and racism gender discrimination stuff like that there there are literal you know application portals where you, they want you to write a write up based on yeah. these things and how are you going to contribute to you know a safe like a safe mental health space in a institute where you are going to work and i think me doing this show i just this you know gives me a huge head start where i can you know write about everything that i've learned and i'm really fortunate that you know i i i had this whole experience and uh, this is something that i'm going to take like forward in wherever i go in the future that's amazing amazing to to know that yeah. uh i think you've had a inspiring journey none none less because uh, coming from an economic background as you said being the breadwinner of the family in a way uh, being the, the bad bad person in some sense because you wanted to not <laughs> do music and do research yeah. in that uh, actor i think you've you've come a really a long way uh, in terms of research in terms of being an artist uh, in terms of being a host because hosting is another form of uh, yeah. work you've done music you've done theater you've done a lot of things and it's it's truly an inspiring journey uh, and i'm i'm so glad and uh, happy that i know you personally so uh, i hope you have a brighter future uh, uh, in your academic career as well as in your music and theater career but of course as always before we let you go mm-hmm. we have a, a, a rapid fire round which no no <laughs> yeah. uh, i guess uh and very scared i don't know it's scared <laughs> don't yeah, be scared. Yeah, but you have been chasing your dreams all along don't be scared now <laughs> <laughs> you 
yeah. conquered everything. Now there's no reason to be scared. Right. You know, from sure, your own sure. journey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Bombard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this or that. This or that. Okay. that. Performing arts or academia. Performing arts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bengali food for life or worldly cuisines? Worldly cuisines. Interesting. Okay. Bengali saying that is yeah. very interesting. Uh, that is. Yeah, okay. I mean, I can cook for other. So I, I really another thing is that I really love cooking, and I've recently been starting putting up some of my cooking videos. So the thing that I enjoy from cooking is, uh, you know, when people eat and appreciate. my food whatever i prepare but i really like to explore and experiment with what i eat so i don't think i'll be able to be stuck with just thing with the food for the rest of my life yeah that reminds me you have promised me uh, that you will you will cook fish for me but you didn't so i'm you going to you have to come to you have to meet me for that i'll definitely do that okay <laughs> fine this is on record now fine okay <laughs> okay sure. early morning lab meeting or late evening lab meeting early morning lab meetings i am a morning person <laughs> uh the this or that is that's that's the end for this or that uh what song best describes your academic journey oh my god okay this, this is very difficult question I never thought about it. Why? Uh, why did you uh, expect that? You do. I mean, <laughs> you know, this happens to me every time someone asks me to sing a song. I just go blank. I have no. I have no idea why this. No song yet. I'm just asking you what song this describes your journey. So let's begin with that. This is very difficult. <laughs> okay. I mean, I just can't think of anything but. I think Asha is that that song the lyrics it it's very inspiring and um, I think I think yeah so now sing it Asha it will be a good thing for us a little bit <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm in lab so it's okay I guess Sunday कुछ पानी की हो आस आस कोई हर मुझे जो खास खास Asha Asha I forget. Oh, I just forget lyrics. Okay. To follow, go to the K. Manzi, I'm singing all the wrong lyrics. Okay. Manzi, no, go to the K. Asha, you live in the K. Umri, the hase, the K. Ab mushkil, nahi kuch bhi, nahi kuch bhi. I forget lyrics, but yeah, I I kind of have an idea of what this song is about. So yeah, this is I think it's it's a very yeah. That's great. I mean, not that you forget, not you forgetting lyrics is great, but <laughs> great that you dedicate <laughs> that song your yeah. to your academic journey. And the last question, uh, what is the first or big significant thing you did after it was announced? uh that you got your phd something that will you know i'll be always be a core memory i think it was not just after it was announced i think it was this whole evening of teaching my mother how to do zoom the night before my defense i couldn't uh, ask her to come to pune but uh, i think and and she learned it so quickly and then the next day the most memorable moment was when my external asked my mother uh, like how do you feel and she 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 is not fluent with english like she can understand but she has never spoken in english and she she told him literally that i feel very happy and uh, i was you know stunned and it just it just felt i don't know i mean it was a very special feeling i will i will never forget that i think that was the most memorable moment Uh, and I just cannot wait, wait to go back home and see her. And yeah, yes, yeah, soon. 
Yes. That's very soon. Yes, very soon, very soon. All right. That's that's your end of rapid fire. And you you did did very well. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'll do better with the lyrics from the next time. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, I will. I will. Say, this it was a very interesting question. I think there will be many songs, but I cannot record it right now. It's a good but, song. Yeah, so. I think it's <laughs> it's it's apt. Yeah. 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 All right. So then now it's time that I ask you to change your roles again, and you're no longer the guest. Thank you for being yes. the guest, but now back being the host. So it's right. time to um, end this season. uh but not only this season um we have covered 50 episodes covering about 54 to 55 people stories we've had guests from around seven nationalities who have done their phd's in eight different countries and i think i i feel so proud to share this moment with both of you yeah. running this show uh i think we we delved into unsaid uh, stuff uh, to the core i would say where people came out and talked about their struggles their journeys their problems how they overcome with these obstacles of course it's not our show we we initiated it but it became something big because people were ready to share their stories because the people were ready to listen to such stories we have no celebrities here we are all common researchers um so i'm i'm really happy to to see the growth of this show and thank you to the audience for always supporting us always giving us feedback liking our posts liking our posters liking and sharing uh, the videos it's time to call off the format i think we've more or less we have talked about no number of things in in this particular aspect but we are not really ending the show right we are we are now looking forward to what we can do next and we are, we are open to ideas from our audience from our supporters from people who have come on the show what they would like us to do in the future what in terms of phd what in terms of academia where do we delve in more so that we find out uh, more stuff about the conversations that matter so with this uh, it's it comes to an end so you yeah, both of you if you have any closing statements or something to share well for me i joined midway uh, and i have had really really great time like how how sukanya says that uh, when she wanted to find a resource to sort the issues of her phd struggle um i think it's not just phd but if you are a researcher like I, i'm a post doc now and these stories have been inspiring as well as helpful for me also in my current professional life and also personal life up to some extent um but again like i joined midway but i have connected with this show right from the beginning and yeah. uh yeah uh and i think like especially in the later uh episodes like i think in in this season where people have people know us for you know four seasons now and um they look at an episode and then they talk to you about it not not on uh social media but you know later uh yeah. i think that is something which is which says that uh, uh how much it means to people and i i really like that i have been a part of something like that uh something which is a very different kind of resource to the community so yeah i'm i'm really proud that i signed up for it and uh, i have been with you guys uh, ever since thank you so much for that yeah. sukanya so, you last yeah. statement i mean yeah, not I last one most... <laughs> yeah no i think i have mostly said uh, about how this show has you know changed me as a person because uh, uh, and uh, transition helped me transition into 
uh, into someone who understands the meaning of phd i think there are still many people out there uh, who are not in research or even people who are in research who do not realize it yet and i think um, this whole series that we have made uh, i am really glad that all the people who have shown us all the love and the support for all these four years but i think it it stays as shweta says as a resource for everyone to uh, you know get back to and i use it regularly as a resource to you know as i said so it's it's something that i'm really proud and of having been a part of creating this whole thing and i think every, every time we have tried to come up with new things i know this whole a format it can get very repetitive but i'm really glad that uh, we we have recognized uh, and uh, you know have tried to explore many different things i don't think any other uh, any other initiative before this has addressed so many things and so many variety of issues in at one go so i am really because we have really you know broken our heads and you know try to get to know people yeah. uh, like uh, for me it was a real struggle to find people uh, because uh, yeah i'm still in a very you know in a bubble i would say but i have this this has really helped me push and break that bubble come out and interact with people all around the world listen to people all around the world and i think this stays as a very very important Uh, material or resource, and uh, and it's it's going to stay. And hopefully, very soon we we come up with new ideas and new ways of uh, carrying this show because this show is just not about interviewing people or uh, it's it's about a bigger thing. The bigger initiative is to help explore the meaning of PhD and uh, the what. Does PhD mean? And I think if it, it there is still a lot that lies, and I hope we will be able to explore that in the future. Maybe not in this format, but some other interesting format. So let's see what's what's in the future. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm really glad that we did this. And yeah, thanks thanks to both of you for taking this ahead. And I couldn't be a part of it last year because of the amount of Pressure I was in, but I'm glad that this this time three of us took it up and it has been more successful than ever. So really, really glad and at peace. Yeah, amazing. So let's just sign off uh, for now. And as we say, uh, it's a we call it PhD the philosophical drama. So this is end of Act One. We will yeah. be back with Act yeah. Two. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.